and welcome to another one of my videos. How are you doing? So today I thought I would give you a basic rundown of what is CF? Why not? Let's start there, shall we? So what is cystic fibrosis? So cystic fibrosis, commonly referred to as CF, is a terminally genetic lung disease, which means eventually, you know, it will kill me. So, yeah, you are born with it, you cannot catch it, um, you cannot develop it, but you can be diagnosed later on in life. CF mainly affects the lungs, but it can also affect your liver, bones, heart, intestines, pancreas, spleen, stomach and weight. It is a disease that slowly destroys the lungs due to frequent infections as well as uh, very often sinus infections, um, stunted growth, meaning that, you know, we're normally quite short, so high shelves are a no-go. You know, that can be an issue in anywhere in the world. Trying to reach that high shelf, so we have a stepping stool and stuff everywhere for me around the house, because I'm tiny, I'm only five foot two, and little. <laughs> uh, we also get clubbed nails. Now, I don't know how well you can see mine, but it means that they get the curve in the nail here and they're quite wide on the finger bed. And when we do that, we get a very small diamond shape in this bit here. And that normally is a sign of clubbing. My thumbs are my worst, big old nails. <laughs> as well as fertility issues and majority of males born with CF are generally infertile. How do you get CF? So to be born with CF, both your parents, so your mum and dad, must carry the gene. This doesn't mean that they have the disease, but they just carry the gene to create it. Now, if those two people have a baby, they have a one in four chance of creating a child with CF. And then if you have someone with the actual disease that has a baby, they have a one in two chance of creating a baby with CF. So in the case of myself, uh, I have three sisters, two full sisters and one half, and I am the only child with CF because I was super lucky. <laughs> but all three of them do carry the gene, just not the disease. Now, if my sisters decide to have children with their partners, their partners will have to get tested for the gene um, to see what the probability is of them creating a child with CF. Also, there is absolutely no history of CF in my family at all. Like, I am the only one. So, you know, I was a really nice surprise for my parents. <laughs> so there are more than like 2,000 different mutations of cystic fibrosis. So, you know, technically I'm a mutant. So, you know, Professor X, give me a call. You know, my power can be not breathing. The most common mutation is DF508. How do they diagnose CF? Well, when I was born, I was a pretty sick baby. Um, not going to the toilet, throwing up a lot, constantly screaming. And CF was not a disease that they generally tested for back then. And it wasn't until I was very unwell that they then diagnosed me at two or three days old. Um, and they did this by doing a sweat test which is where you take the baby and you wrap them up in a lot of blankets and put them under a heat lamp and literally make them sweat. Uh, and then it is collected and tested for the salt content. Why sweat? Because we're salty. All people with CF are incredibly salty. We lose a lot of salt through our skin when we sweat. Um, so much so to the point that sometimes in the summer it can actually crystallize on our foreheads and our arms. I mean, you know, pfft. Me and Luke haven't had to buy salt since we got together in like 2009, you know, just scrape it off me and put it in a jar. I'm joking, obviously. <laughs> no, seriously, I wouldn't do that, like, ew. <laughs> but majority these days are diagnosed with a heel prick test uh, just a few hours after birth. And that is literally just a little prick in the bottom of the heel. They take some blood and test the blood. Can CF be cured? Currently, no. But there are amazing things being done in research right now. 
The CF Trust, who I will link in the description below, they mainly receive their money from fundraisers and public donations. Transplant. Transplant can be discussed and they normally bring this up when your lung function, which is how well your lungs are working, consistently sits below 30%. However, transplant is not a cure. It simply resets the lungs until CF slowly destroys them again. Great. <laughs> but a transplant is very risky and survival is not always possible. However, some people may have one and live for 10 plus years and then other people might have one and not even live for a year. It is dependent on the bugs that you catch, how well you recover from the transplant and to be honest, some of it is luck. How long will someone with CF live? So depending on severity, research and drug advancements, this number is always changing. When I was born in 1989, they told my parents that I most likely wouldn't live to reach my teenage years. And now I'm 30, you know, and the life expectancy overall is 47 years for people with CF, which is amazing. For me personally, and my health in general, and the way my CF is going, I probably have around another five to seven years, which is actually pretty good, you know? And so if I could make it to 40, which is 10 years, that would be incredible. Like, come on, how cool is that? Yeah, April, because that's cool. <laughs> oh, I might not die till I'm 40, yay! <laughs> and finally, does CF make life hard? Yes, absolutely. I would be lying if I said to you that I found it all very easy and it came to me just like that. You know, sometimes doing treatments and things like that get boring, it gets annoying. You just, sometimes you would just like to wake up and not have to take a single pill, not have to do a nebulizer, not have to do physio, and not have to physically think about your health and adjust your days to how your body is feeling. You know, but I'm also very aware that I don't have all the time in the world, which is a lot of the reasons that I do get up and I do get dressed and I do my hair and makeup because even though I may not be leaving the house, it's important that I try and make myself feel good every day. It's important that when I'm able, and I understand that there are times I can't always do that. There are times where I just have to stay in pajamas all day. And there are times when I physically can't get out of my bed because I'm too unwell. But the days that I can, I really wanna to prove to myself that even though I'm sick and I'm disabled, I can still look good. I can still feel good. That's important to do that with the time I have here. You know, and treatments are just part of my life. The other option is don't die or do and live. So as always, don't be afraid to ask questions. I'm very open and I absolutely don't mind. You know, once again, I just wanna help people learn. So if you have a question, please ask me. I don't mind at all. And remember, be brave, be amazing, be you, and just keep shining. All my love. Pretty pop.